In the making of this video, I would like to acknowledge and thank the caretakers of the land on Treaty 7 territory, the Pekani First Nation, Siksika First Nation, the Yarhi Yithka Nakoda First Nations, the Sutina First Nation, the ancestral territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, and home of Métis Region Number 3. Hi, today I'm near Longview, Alberta. We're close to the uh, OH Ranch, and these hills were uh, once home to the world's largest bighorn sheep. And uh, so today, let's draw a bighorn sheep. Okay, welcome back to my uh, drawing and painting videos. And uh, we're going to do something a little bit uh, new today because I know that you're ready for it. And we are going to start painting. So we are going to be uh, painting the bighorn sheep today. So what you will need is a uh, pencil or a charcoal pencil and uh, a kneaded eraser. As you remember, I like to uh, make my kneaded eraser into the shape of the, uh, the creature that we're going to be drawing. And some kind of watercolor paper. I'm using a plastic uh, kind of watercolor paper. It's called Yupo watercolor paper. It's uh, something I've been using recently and I like the effect that I'm getting so I'm going to use it today. You can get different kinds as I mentioned. Um, if you've got just a watercolor set it will work. I like to use tubes and I'll show you that in a minute. But the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to start drawing the uh, bighorn sheep. And uh, Ken Richardson, my friend, has supplied some awesome uh, reference from this photo here that you can see of a bighorn sheep. And uh, we will begin drawing. So we're going to look at this uh, sheep, how it's going to best fit on this page. And I'm just going to... I'm going to look at the negative space. That is the space around around the uh, sheep, the white space. And I'm going to uh, just, uh, okay, I can see this goes a little bit further down here. Just going to kind of get an indication of where the big shapes are going to be. Some of you are going to be more successful at this than I am, and that's great. That's what I want. And we're just going to take this line down here, like so. You can also see, if I kind of squint my eyes, I can see the sh white shape in here is kind of going to go uh, something like, it looks like an apostrophe. Like this, or a comma over here. And then I can see that this uh, ear sits back here a bit. This horn comes right in here. What we're doing today is we're providing ourselves with a map uh, where the paint is going to go. So, uh, very different uh, way of working than before. I... Uh, decided to start doing these videos again because, uh, well, the first ones I did was because, or was because um, I'm a teacher and our school was in lockdown, so I started doing my drawing videos for them, and then I decided to share them on YouTube with anybody, and, but we haven't uh, done any painting until today. So this is where your drawing skills are really going to come in handy and shine because uh, you'll be able to provide yourself with a good, good map for this bighorn to follow. Um, so we can kind of rough in the shapes there. It's starting to look like something. Right now, as I talk, I believe that we're in the 
fifth wave and things have just uh, skyrocketed. They've stopped keeping count of uh, COVID cases. So I know a lot of you have been inside for a long time and, uh, you know, I've been doing my drawing and painting and that's kept me happy. And again, I'm happy to share this with you, what I know about it. Okay, so that nose is actually a bit further down than I thought. It's down here. Okay. Now, with this uh, charcoal pencil, oh, I can see that and I missed a lot in here. The horn is quite a bit bigger. The ear actually sits back here. And maybe this doesn't go so high. It maybe goes to about here. Okay, now this is where the big horn comes in handy here. Looking at this uh, Looking at this horn here, and I think I went way overboard. It doesn't go anywhere near that uh, that far. And remember, when I'm drawing, or when we were drawing before, try and uh, just look at all the shapes and the relationships of the shapes. Don't try and think. Don't try and think. Oh, I'm working on the horn now, or I'm working on the the uh, nose, or whatever the eye. I know you want to go right to the eye, so do I, but uh, let's just try and get all the big shapes and the relationships where they're supposed to be before we uh, start having fun with that. Okay, so this is going to come down like so. I'm almost creating an outline uh, or a map for a coloring book here because we're going to start dropping the color in pretty soon. This paper is a little bit different than your average paper because it is made out of uh, plastic. I find that the drawing you only get kind of one chance to work on it on the drawing and then it it uh, doesn't accept anymore. So now I want you to uh, remember how we shaded before we kind of let's move our pencil back and forth like this. I wouldn't say this paper is great for for drawing by the way. This is more a painting kind of paper. I'm just looking where everything is kind of gray. And this is going to get uh, mixed in the water, the watercolor, this uh, sort of, uh, this charcoal is. And this is going to be a lot of fun to do all these. You see all these lines that are on the horn? Like a tree uh, rings. It kind of gives you an idea of how old this, uh, this sheep is. I'm going to guess that it's about 12 to 14 years old. But my uh, friends that are... Uh, Hunters or artists that know a lot about sheep might uh, disagree with me there. but So we're going to just um, kind of do these ridges on the horn to fit the uh, shape of uh, before we drop any uh, watercolor on there. And like so. Um, 
So last week I talked to my friend uh, uh, Ali Left Hand, and uh, Ali Left Hand is a artist friend of mine, and he's from the uh, the uh, Yiska or the ERA Yiska uh, Nakota First Nation, not far from here. Some folks refer to uh, it as Eden Valley, and uh, there are a lot of uh, bighorn sheep there and uh, he knew a lot about or he does know a lot about uh, bighorn sheep he told me that the river that I live on uh, in Okotoks is called the Sheep River they called it uh, Kiska Wapta because the name for uh, bighorn sheep in uh, his language and culture is Kiska so we're going to paint a Kiska today and yeah so Ali and I we met at oil fields uh, uh, high school where I, I taught uh, for six years and uh, we talked a lot about uh, reconciliation which means uh, making friends again with the uh, indigenous people understanding uh, the past anyway uh, he uh, Ali gave me language lessons so I've been trying to learn the language a little bit which is why we are going to learn the name for uh, bighorn sheep which is as I said Kiska and should be really enjoyable to do I, I can just paint and draw all the time but I get uh, torn away from it to do other things and that's probably good uh, so uh, the biggest up until a couple of years ago, the biggest bighorn sheep ever uh, recorded was uh, found near here. A trophy hunter didn't uh, get it. It was it actually he uh, got hit by a uh, car because uh, um, the sheep like the uh, salt, licking the salt off the roads, and the motorist didn't see. Him in time and unfortunately he got killed but uh, Ali told me that he had seen that uh, sheep quite often. This is what we were the scene in one time uh, on a highwood river by uh, Oit Ranch. This Kishka was always sitting there looking around looking after the water. Water set and people some people don't realize at one time before he got hit by a car, a vehicle. And all his fur got white. I saw them, I saw him sitting there. Oh, geez, wonder what's the message. His, his message always come, I want to get the message and it meant the river, I guess, to heal the river, the water set. I really only need four colors. So, you need a blue, I use an ultramarine, maybe a red, yellow, and uh, I add a couple just to make things easier for myself. One of them is uh, burnt sienna, which is a brown, because it will take me all day to, to get that color right. I don't use a black uh, yet, till the end if I do. I use something that's called a Payne's Gray. It's kind of a warmer black. And that is all you need and uh, to get going. Just going to have a sip of tea here. I like uh, Japanese rice tea is what I drink. Very good when you're doing watercolor. Now, uh, I've got some uh, Kleenex close by in case I have any major spills. And uh, so we'll take a Kleenex out here. 
And what you want to do in your palette here is put some water in here. And you're looking at the, uh, you want to make these uh, pools. So I got a little bit of yellow in here, a little bit of red, brown, whatever you can see in that, uh, in that uh, big horn sheep. So I'm going to sit down now and because I've been standing up. Okay. So I can see that there's kind of this uh, really nice kind of yellowy brown in here. This watercolor paper uh, is much different than normal watercolor paper would soak this up right away. But this isn't going to dry for, uh, for a while. And I'm just going to almost like tint it and uh, tint the paper is what I'm doing. Or tint your drawing. And your drawing's going to smudge a bit. That's why I didn't uh, take, like do a really, really careful drawing. And you want the water, or you want the colors uh, that you can see to just swirl around because they're going to do all these interesting things. You don't want to make it look like a photo. You want to have your structure right, but uh, you don't want to necessarily make it look like a, a photo. That isn't the idea. You want some uh, personality of this uh, sheep or ram. And uh, on that topic, you know, uh, I, uh, I did an album cover uh, for an uh, artist named Ian Tyson. And, uh, and uh, I did a bunch of drawings at his ranch. And uh, I showed him later. For some reason, I, I wanted to draw. Uh, he had his sheep skull there. So I drew the sheep skull. And he said, oh, I really like that. So... I thought, okay, that's what he wanted on the cover. So I said, okay, what uh, what are we going to call this? Uh, or what are you going to call this album, the songs and whatever? So he didn't know, I didn't know. So we decided we would have a contest with his uh, fan club. He's got a fan club. He's uh, so famous or whatever. So... Uh, so Ian Tyson Music, we had a contest, and that was there was prizes and everything. Who could come up with a name of uh, this uh, image of this ram skull that uh, I had uh, drawn, and and so we got all kinds of ideas. I think there was uh, 500, 600 people uh, put in their ideas, and a person, a woman from California, I believe, forget her name, she put in. Hers and it was Carnero Vaquero. So, Carnero Vaquero, what does it mean? If you're Spanish or you can speak Spanish, you know what it means. It's kind of a strange name, I guess, for an a album of, of cowboy music, but not really, because uh, Vaquero means uh, cowboy in Spanish. You see, before there was Hollywood cowboys, there was uh, cowboys in uh, Mexico. They were called vaqueros. And uh, carnero in Spanish means uh, sheep. Okay, so sheep and uh, sheep cowboy is uh, what we called the album, carnero vaquero. So... It's a good album, great songs. Oh, anyway, so I'm working on this uh, painting and or drawing, and Ian and I are uh, talking about okay the album, and we're gonna have a contest, all that. And I'm driving along by his house, and CBC radio comes on, and they say uh, the world's biggest ram has just been uh, found by the road. Um, near Longview, Alberta. And you know what? That was only about five miles, 10 miles away from from Ian's ranch. So it was kind of weird, but kind of cool for that to happen. Okay, so you can see this is uh, starting to look like uh, something. 
I'm going to put some uh, drop of the uh, because it's pretty round in there and I'm going to put some more pigment in here And you know what? You may be very well doing a better job than uh, than I am, and that's cool, man. I'm happy for that. Uh, real easy for this to get away on me. And uh, fortunately, with this paper, you can wipe it right down to nothing again. But you kind of only have, uh, with this paper, you only have one shot with the pencil for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I guess maybe we're saving some trees by uh, using this paper. Now you can really move this uh, paint around. Like I say, a different watercolor paper is going to soak in and it's going to be far more forgiving than uh, what I'm doing, but we'll just give this a shot see what happens it's only paper and uh, paint it's nothing to be scared of have a little bit of fun go a little bit reckless or however whatever kind of mood you're in you might want to put some music on and dance around a little bit I often listen to music when I'm working. Actually, you know what uh, music you should listen to is uh, Carnero Vaquero by Ian Tyson. Listen to the whole album. That's where I got the idea for uh, the um, kind of images I should do. Okay, I went upstairs, got some uh, Q-tips there. So we'll, uh, we can go back in where it's still a little bit wet and we can put wherever we see kind of, or wherever you see kind of a highlight happening. And we can take away some of the paint there. I don't know if you can see my palette here, but I'm going to mix in some uh, yellow and red, make kind of an orange, as well as the brown. Uh, because you can see on uh, the bighorn's nose here, I want some of these pools to dry kind of uh, like uh, kind of a gingery color in here. These uh, sheep are just fantastic to watch. I, my wife and I often go out to, uh, to uh, the Sheep River, the upper Sheep River near the mountains, Kiskawapta, and uh, we'll walk up that road, Kananaskis Road, and uh, there'll be big groups of them, like uh, this little footage here of the young ones and the... Uh, the mothers are right up close to them when we were walking, so it's pretty cool. How cool is this crop? Oh, yeah. I'm glad I brought my camera today. If you get a chance when you're doing this, listen to Ian Tyson's latest uh, album there, Carnero Vaquero, it's a good one.
Now I know there is no purple in here. You guys know what uh, how to mix a purple. Good purple is uh, blue and uh, red, right? So you know what, I'm going to do that anyway, even though I don't see a lot of purple in here. I'm going to put purple in the shadows just because I feel like it. Remember what I told you about your artistic license that, uh, you know what, you're, you're the boss here. Do it how you want to do it. If you want to make this uh, pink horn sheep green, go for it. This is about you and what you want to do. And uh, the purple actually looks quite uh, interesting in there, even though. And then you see you get these little happy accidents, right? Just like Bob Ross says, when you're just letting loose, just doing whatever. Some of it will appear to be uh, a mistake and you won't uh, love it. You can change it. But some of it will be just like, wow. See, I like that purple in there. That's that's looking kind of cool. Maybe I'll put some, whoops, that's a little too red down here. Why not? I did go too far with this horn, though it's not that. How oh, I have it here. There we go. That looks better already. Okay. I like some of the things that are happening right now, so it's going to give it some time to dry here. A bit and then I'll come back to it in a minute. Hmm. Okay there it's a little bit lighter now and uh, I had it set a little too dark. Now you can go back in here and uh, draw So, just adjusting some of the angles down on the nose here. If you want to go in with a uh, a finer brush like this, you could. For sure. Whoops. That got away on me a little. I wanted to get uh, that um, sheep has got a really brown sort of eyeball. So I'm going to try and hit it with some color in here. What you want to do is create some pools and they dry and they look really neat because they uh, have kind of a, they dry with kind of a harder edge. A little bit in, unpredictable. From drawing here I can see that I set that sheep's eye a little bit too low. It should be up a little higher here but maybe I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, set it up here move it slightly. thing is about working from a great photo like this that my friend Ken's taken, um, your reference kind of determines the uh, like the photo that you're working from or if you've set up something uh, to work from from life it, and the lighting and everything that kind of sets you up for uh, for success because if you were to look at the uh, the drawing that you do today from uh, from uh, this picture, if someone doesn't see the picture, they're going to be amazed. They're going to go, wow, 
How did you do that? It's exactly what uh, what your parents are going to say if you're a younger student and you know your parent or guardian's going to put this on the fridge. I guarantee it. If you uh, put a good effort into it. And uh, you can always uh, message me on Instagram and uh, Art with Raspo. And I'll post it. Happy to. I always like to see what people do uh, from my videos. <laughs> On that note, you know, uh, I've changed my videos from uh, the beginning. It was called Drawing with Mr. R, then it was called Drawing with Paul. And there's a lot of people out there named Paul that are have drawing videos. And even Mr. R, I think there's one. And so, uh, you know, my students... Uh, high school students they started calling me Raspo and it was something that really stuck and the kids would call me Raspo instead of Mr. Rasprich or whatever I don't know something I couldn't really stop once it started <laughs> my own kids uh, my own two boys they uh, Right from the beginning, they wouldn't even call me dad, even though I'm their dad. Um, they would say, okay, Paul. They still call me Paul. Once in a while they call me dad, but again, it's not something that, uh, wasn't a mountain that I was going to die on. So I, I got used to it. Mm. Okay, this is starting to look mountain sheepish. I'm just going to let that dry. So I'm just going in with my brush here and uh, doing a little bit of these uh, marks on. Uh, the big horns, uh, horns here. I'm trying to go with the uh, the shape or the contour of the the horn when I do these little brush strokes. As many years as I've been doing this, I mean, it things do get away on me all the time. I just spent a little time uh, trying to reestablish where all the dark areas were. And this paper, if you're using a more absorbent paper, you can, or you're probably getting better results than me. I'm still getting used to this because as much as you uh, are putting paint on, you're also wiping it off with this particular paper because it's, uh, it's non-absorbent. The advantage of it is that I can wipe away everywhere that it's white just by putting a little bit of water on a Q-tip or uh, cleaning up the background here. That's the good part about it. The bad part about it, or the hard part about it, is that uh, controlling the uh, where the paint's going and, and coming off. It's not going to respond uh, in a uh, in a really accurate way, but uh, I'm going for an effect of kind of uh, pooling. I want lots of pooling and interesting things to happen. So when you start to do that, you start to sacrifice control when you're um, experimenting like that and you want to have a bit more wilder effect, you know? Like I might, 
I might uh, spray some alcohol on here afterwards, get some kind of uh, cool drips and things going. Maybe I'll show you that when I get there. And then you can continually go back and and uh, work with your charcoal where it will actually adhere or stick, right? You want it to look more drawing like you can do some cross hatching on it and then you want to maximize whatever areas are looking good then just leave them if something's looking great just leave it and then go on to something else I'm showing you a trick. Uh, I've got a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Sometimes uh, what I like to do is uh, just give it a few to give it some texture. I just might throw some of that on there. Oh, some of it is going where I don't want it to go. I'll just throw some uh, drips on there. That's going to create some interesting uh, texture. Maybe on his horns there, that would look cool. Get some of that going. Give it a kind of weathered look. Now you can see in some areas uh, where I didn't want it to take away anything like that. I can fix that later. But it gives it kind of a neat texture. And then I'm going to go in afterwards and uh, do some uh, touch-ups. And hopefully that'll be it. Okay, so I literally could go on forever here uh, painting. What I did uh, was I used a little bit of this stuff. It's called uh, gouache, white gouache, and I mixed it with the watercolor a little bit uh, to do some highlights at the end here. If you're a watercolorist, and um, <clears throat> some of them are very, uh, the watercolorists are very uh, purist about it. They don't want to use white ever, but uh, the... Uh, the painters that I like, like Charlie Russell, uh, they were trained as illustrators as I was, and uh, you want to get the best effect. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed uh, painting this bighorn as much as I did. And if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's called Art with Raspo. I'm doing some painting ones now, and also I'm on Instagram at Art with Raspo. We'll see you next time.